Today I'm going to teach you how to achieve some really cool, really creative scrolling effects using Elementor Pro. If you didn't already know, Elementor Pro has scrolling effects built into their page builder. This allows you to add some pretty advanced effects to your website without ever having to touch code. In this video, I'm going to show you where those scrolling effects are located and walk you through how I created this scene here. Let's get started. In order to achieve an effect like this, we'll need to layer elements on top of each other using absolute positioning and Z index. What do absolute positioning and Z index mean? Absolute positioning defines the position of a given bounding box from the top and left side margins of your page. When we use absolute positioning, we can place items in an exact location and stack them on top of each other. Z index controls the stacking order of elements on a page. A higher Z index will appear in front of a lower Z index. And if you've ever used Photoshop before, Z index is kind of like the layers palette. For my scene, I found this free vector image on VectEZ that I thought would be perfect. The first thing that I needed to do was figure out what elements I wanted to scroll. I decided that as I scrolled on the page, I wanted the sun to move down and the trees to move left and right off the page. Then I took my image into Illustrator to deconstruct it. Instead of this being one image, I needed to make this four different images in order for the scrolling effects to work right. First, I saved an image of just the background. Then I saved an image of the trees and mountains on the left, then on the right. And then finally, I saved the sun as an image. Now that I have four images in total, it's time to build my page. I already went ahead and created a simple header and footer for this site, but I want to mention that we do need to add Z index to the header, so I'm going to start with this. I want the text and the logo to be white, since there's going to be an orange color in the background. But obviously you can't see what things look like when you're creating this, so this is something that I like to do. For testing purposes, I added a background color to this container. And once I have it on my actual page and looking good, I just go in and remove that color. There's probably a better way to do this, but this is just what I like to do. So if you want to use my little trick, feel free. Since I want my header to lay on top of the image that's in the background, I went ahead and made my Z index 10. To do this, you'll go under the advanced tab, then enter a number in the Z index box. The number that you enter doesn't really matter as long as it's higher than what's beneath it. By default, your containers are set to zero, so putting this at 10 works fine. Now I'm going to open up a new page in Elementor. I'll add a container and then make sure the container is set to full width because I want the elements inside to go all the way to the end of the page. Next, I'll go to Advanced and remove the padding on the container by setting it to zero. Then I'm going to add a negative top margin to the container to move the entire container up so it lays behind the header. And since we gave that header a Z index of 10 in the last step, we should be able to see it. Real quick, I'm going to edit the header to remove the background color because I no longer need that now. Okay, back to editing the page. I'm going to open up the navigator. For a page that looks like this with lots of overlapping elements, the navigator is your best friend. I like to label the containers and widgets inside so that I know what I'm clicking on. It helps me stay organized so I don't click on the wrong widget or container and edit something that I don't want to. It's time to start adding elements. First, I'll start by adding my background image. On the container, I'll go to style, then add my background image here. Under the settings, I did the background position at top center. Depending on your background, you might need to play around with the positioning, but top center worked well for me. Then I'll make sure to set the repeat to no repeat and the display size to cover. Now let's add the image of the trees on the left. I'll drag over an image widget and add my image. Under style, I played with the image size settings. Then I'll go to advanced and under position, select absolute. I want this to lock to the bottom left of the screen, so I'm going to select that from the options. But as you can see, I have to play around with the offset a little bit in order to get it just right. One nice thing about having separate images is that you can do this pretty easily. You can offset the images or adjust the size if you need to on different screen sizes. When using absolute positioning, there's a lot of trial and error that goes into it, 
So just play around with the settings, use responsive mood, and do a lot of testing until you get it to where you want it. Personally, I like to use percentage for the offset because I think that just works better, but use whatever works well for you. There's a lot of patience that goes into getting this just right, but in the end, it's going to look really cool. Most likely, you're going to need to add custom breakpoints for a laptop in Elementor because you will run into some weird positioning issues. So just go ahead and add that before you get too far in the process to save yourself the headaches. To do that, go to Site Settings, Layout, Breakpoints, and then add Laptop. Okay, one image down, two more to go. I basically just need to repeat this process for the other two images and adjust the positioning and the sizes for different breakpoints. Let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Now that I've added my images, I need to add my heading text. So I'm going to drag over a heading widget and add my text there. Let me style that so it looks a bit better on the page. The last thing that I need to do on this widget is adjust the Z index because I want to make sure that it's above the tree images that are on the left and the right. So we'll go to advanced, Z index, and I'm going to make that 10 and you can see how it adjusted and moved forward. I'm going to adjust this heading text for the different breakpoints and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my layout set, it's responsive and it's looking good. I've added a few sections of content underneath so I have more to scroll on the page. That's going to help me visually see the effects that I'm about to add. Now it's time for the fun part, which is adding the scrolling effects. Let's start with the sun. We'll go to advanced, motion effects, and click the scrolling effects toggle on. Now we get some more options, and since I want this to move down, I'm going to click vertical scroll. From here, we'll adjust the settings. I want this to move pretty fast, so I'm going to set the speed to eight. Then I'm going to adjust the viewport. This part, not gonna lie, is a little confusing to understand. I'm not a big fan of the way Elementor does this. I don't think it's intuitive at all, and in a lot of cases, it does the opposite of what I'd expect it to do. If you want to learn more about how this works, our friend Imran from Web Squadron made a really detailed video that does a great job explaining it, so check that out. I'll leave a link to it in the description. What you put in for these settings will depend on what you want your scene to look like, so results will vary. But as you can see, there's a lot you can do, and it's built right into Elementor Pro. We have vertical scroll, horizontal scroll, transparency, blur, scale. These settings alone can create a lot of really awesome effects, so have fun with it. And if you do create something, share a link to it in the comments so I can check it out because I love to see what you guys have created. I'm going to repeat this process for my other images and I'll be right back. And we're done. I really like how this effect turned out and I think it's really awesome that we can achieve something like this using just Elementor Pro and no additional plugins. Yes, it is a little more advanced and will require some patience to get it right, but the results in the end are pretty nice. I like to keep my sites as lean as possible with the amount of plugins that I add, so I don't really like adding additional plugins if I don't have to. So having this built into Elementor Pro is really nice because I can do a lot of really advanced effects without having to add anything extra. I hope that you found this video helpful, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel where we do a lot more Elementor tutorials. And if you did create something cool, leave a link down below in the comments because I definitely want to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!